welcome everybody. I don't know if you guys can hear me. Um, Hello. Ah, there we go. Thank you very much. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so welcome everybody. Um, welcome to our uh, webinar on um, oceans and human health. How is the health of the ocean and the health of humanity linked to the ocean? Um, and um, uh, happy uh, World Ocean Day to you all. Um, so, oopsie, let me just get, there we go. So, so this um, uh, webinar is co-organized by the Oceans and Human Health Project SOFI, Horizon 2020 Project by Sirica, um, by us, the European Marine Board, and by the uh, Horizon 2020 Project Blue Health. Um, just before we start, I will uh, give you some housekeeping rules. Uh, first of all, we are recording this webinar, so please let us um, let us be aware that we're recording. So make sure that you whatever you say is is for public uh, for the public to be able to hear. Um, if I can ask the panelists to please keep themselves muted and the video off when when they're not speaking, that'd be great. Um, the participants, uh, you uh, can ask questions in the question and answer. Um, uh, section of the of the webinar, you should be able to find it at the bottom of your screen. Um, please keep the chat feature only for any kind of um, technical problems that you might have and ask questions to the speakers in the question and answers. Um, and if you do ask a question, please give your name and where you're from and who you're asking the question to so that when I read those questions out later, um, I'll be able to say who asked the question and who the question is for. Um, and then, as I said, keep the chat for general um, questions. Um, the program is for today is we'll have a few opening remarks, uh, a welcome by myself and by um, the member of European Parliament, uh, Tonito Petula. I know he's going to have to say his own last name. Um, then Laura Fleming is going to give a um, description of what Oceans and Human Health is. Um, then we're going to have four speakers who are going to tell us what oceans and human health mean to them, which has um, been pre-recorded, so we'll, we'll play those videos. Those speakers are, will be here, so you can ask them questions afterwards. Um, Laura is then going to tell us what do we know about oceans and human health and what can we do about it. Um, and then we'll have an inter interactive discussion session, which hopefully um, we'll have some time to take some questions. Um, and then finally, Ziga Gruber uh, from the European Commission will give the European Commission perspective and closing remarks. Um, so then just to say, uh, you might wonder who I am. I'm Sheila Heymans, the Executive Director of the European Marine Board. Um, and basically, uh, we are putting on this, this event. Uh, we would have hoped to have had it in Parliament, um, but unfortunately, this is not possible with the COVID situation right now. So we're putting it on uh, virtually and we hope that you will find it informative. Um, we will also throughout this, this webinar show you some pictures. These are basically images that are of importance to each of the, the speakers. Um, and basically what we ask people to, to say is what does oceans and human health mean to you? And this is basically a, a picture that I chose. It, it shows you a fishing trawler that um, was shipwrecked, shipwrecked on the coast of Namibia, which is where I'm from. And it shows you the beauty of, of the ocean, but also how uh, important it is to, to not, um, to make sure that you, you don't overextend yourself and, and uh, the, the ocean can be uh, a difficult place to, to do business. Um, and without, without any further ado then, I will uh, ask uh, the president of the Sirica Intergroup, um, the MEP Tonino Pichula. <laughs> I can't do it, sorry. <laughs> Maybe you can give your own name, that'd be great. Thank you very much to give us an opening, opening remarks. Thank you. Thank you, Sheila. You uh, almost uh, succeeded in pronouncing my name. <laughs> anyway, of course, thank you for your introductory remarks and uh, describing space we are uh, moving in during this webinar. Of course, I would like to uh, greet all other participants, speakers, and uh, friends I uh, know from uh, before. Uh, anyway, I'm so pleased to welcome you 
all to this uh, webinar dedicated to oceans and uh, human uh, health, um, organized thanks to the collaboration uh, between uh, SOFIE project, Marine Board, Blue Health Project, and uh, SIRICA Intergroup from the Parliament. And um, SIRICA Intergroup, uh, I got pleasure to represent today as a president and, uh, of course, member of European Parliament. Uh, as, as you know, and I guess uh, many times during uh, this conversation today, we are celebrating uh, a World Ocean Day. And just a few hours ago, Commissioner for Environment, Oceans and Fisheries um, I launched a new blue initiative, European for Ocean Coalition, uh, to connect uh, different organizations and projects with a common mission, um, raise awareness about ocean and engage citizens and stakeholders into a shared and responsible management of our marine environment and the resources. Uh, I believe that our discussion today will bring us closer towards the same goal improving the understanding of human influence on the ocean and ocean's influence on people. That's exactly uh, what we uh, can call ocean literacy. But today it's also the difficult historical moment we are living in and makes our discussion on the link between human and ocean health even more timely. The ongoing COVID-19 crisis clearly shows how deeply linked is human health to the health of our environment and how fragile can be this relationship. I'm also thrilled to hear our experts and discover more about this emerging and fascinating topic of oceans and human health, which I'm sure will inspire us in our, our work. The oceans covers more than 70 percentage of the surface of our planet, we all know that. And we all benefit from it as a resource of food, economic development, and also as a means of recreation in our everyday life. However, unregulated human activities and the careless use of natural resources can have a negative impact on oceans. This is a concern for all citizens. And uh, as a member of the European Parliament and of the Syrian Inca Group, I support the mission to healthy oceans, which is precondition for uh, the prosperity of our economies and societies. But before going into discussion, let me present you Sirica, the intergroup of the European Parliament on seas, uh, rivers, islands, and coastal areas. That I pleasure to present here today. With the support of the Conference of Peripheral Mar Maritime Regions, Sirica brings together 107 members of the Parliament from 23 different member states and six political groups, representing one of the big, biggest intergroups for this mandate in the parliament. Our mission is to stimulate debate on key issues related to the different aspects of the marine uh, policies and to promote the development of a strong cross-cutting blue dimension in all different policies and programs taking, of course, into account territorial specificities. We believe in a holistic approach to all maritime related issue, uh, which we put into practice by coordinating the work of the parliament and by promoting stakeholders' participation. We also count on a great collaboration with the other institutions with a view of facilitating such synergies and exchanging ideas and practice. Each of our 12 vice presidents is responsible for a specific policy issue on sea basin, including islands. Just to mention an example of our recent activity, in April we adopted a declaration on the impact of the COVID-19 crisis, calling for further urgent actions in uh, support of all coastal communities and maritime sectors, including scientific research and innovations. A few weeks ago, we discussed with Commissioner Sinkivicius our concerns and proposals, and we will continue to follow up on in the context of the recovery plan, the long-term budget on European Union and its related programs and strategies. Now, I thank you 
for uh, your participation and it is with a great pleasure, pleasure that I give the floor uh, to Professor Laura Fleming from the University of uh, Exeter who will introduce us with the oceans and the human health. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Minister. Okay, so now, uh, as the Minister says, we will go to, I think we're going to have a video first, if I'm not mistaken, um, a video of the SOFI project, and uh, my assistant here, Paula, is going to hopefully uh, be able to, to show that to us. I think we're going to have a video first, if I'm not mistaken. Um, a video of the SOFI project, and uh, my assistant here, Paula, is going to hopefully uh, be able to show that to us. Humans have interacted with the ocean since ancient times. We have used it as a means of transportation, recreation, a source of food and raw materials, and more recently, to generate renewable energy. Whilst the ocean can benefit human health and boost well-being via activities like recreation and relaxation, it can also pose risks to Sorry about that, we're going to try again. Humans have interacted with the ocean since ancient times. We have used it as a means of transportation, recreation, a source of food and raw materials, and more recently, to generate renewable energy. Whilst the ocean can benefit human health and boost well-being via activities like recreation and relaxation, it can also pose risks to human health through factors such as flooding and pollution. This complicated mix of threats and opportunities interact in ways we don't fully understand. Exploring these relationships is the basis for an emerging scientific discipline called Oceans and Human Health. As a maritime continent, conducting research in this area is important for Europe, its inhabitants and its ocean. So the European Commission funded seas, oceans and public health in Europe to build a research programme which will help protect the ocean, harness its health benefits and reduce its risks. Sophie brought marine and environmental scientists together with medical and social scientists, public health and other experts to tackle these complicated issues in a unique forum. But this was about more than interesting science. Sophie created a network of people and organisations interested in the links between oceans and human health to explore how marine tourism and citizen science can contribute to this exciting area of research. The project has gathered information from many different sources, from citizens, from research findings, from data repositories and from existing European policies. Sophie also developed a research roadmap, setting a course for scientists to gather evidence and inform policies which enhance and protect both human health and the health of the marine environment. These recommendations will be Sophie's legacy. With your help, we can advance the field of oceans and human health across Europe and the world. So that gives you a good introduction um, to Oceans and Human Health and the SOFI project. And uh, now we're going to go to, uh, oh, I think I'm going to have to share my screen. And then we're going to go to Laura Fleming, who's going to give us an overview of oceans and human health. There you go, Laura, the floor is yours. Thank you, Sheila, and thank you also to Sarika for this amazing opportunity to present to the EU Parliament, but also to the wider ocean and human health community. Um, I'm a physician epidemiologist based at the University of Exeter, and I've been involved in oceans and human health now for several decades. And I think that with all the tragedy that the COVID-19 pandemic has brought, it has also put front and center how our health depends on the health of our environment and in this case, particularly the oceans. Next slide. So as many people on the webinar already know, Europe is a very ocean environment with multiple seas and ocean coastline and increasingly population living near or on the coast. 
Also, ocean economy is important in terms of jobs and GVA. Next slide. We all know that the oceans can present significant risks to health. We've known this literally for hundreds of years from storms and floods. And with um, human caused climate change, this is only gonna get worse. And also there's issues such as harmful algal blooms, microbial pollution and chemicals and plastics. Next slide. Even though we've known about the fact that ocean can provide benefits and opportunities to our health and well-being, we now are increasingly gathering the evidence for this. And so in addition to the fact that it can help our mental and physical health and well-being to interact with blue environments, we also know that seafood and aquaculture are important source of protein and other nutrients, the potential for renewable energy along the coasts and even beyond transport, and of course, the possibility of new medications and other food sources and resources from marine biotechnology. Next slide. The SOFI project, the Seas, Oceans and Public Health in Europe project funded by Horizon 2020 was tasked with creating a diverse network of stakeholders across Europe who were focused on oceans and human health. We were also tasked with developing a strategic research agenda or SRA as a legacy for the project. Next slide. We are a group of international multi interdisciplinary um, partners um, across Europe, which include not only academic institutions, but national marine and public health institutions, and also three SME partners. Next slide. And we tried to interact and listen to as many different voices as we could as part of the SOFI project. So not only the public, but the medical and public health communities, the marine communities, a particular focus in blue tourism and also policymakers towards creating this strategic research agenda. Next slide. And we also looked for evidence using transdisciplinary collaboration and an intense consultation process. And anybody who's interested in this can find this on the SOFI website that I'll show at the end of, of this webinar. Next slide. The strategic research agenda identified three areas where ocean and human health actions are present and should go forward as having research gaps and opportunities for um, benefits. The first is marine biodiversity, biotechnology and medicine, then there's sustainable seafood and healthy people, and finally blue tourism, blue spaces, tourism and well-being. The actual SRA led by the European Marine Board was cr created by 20 interdisciplinary international experts who met twice over the past two years we asked them to address the short term of 2030 in terms of their vision. And we are all clear that whatever we have done does not define or constrict the area of oceans and human health. Next slide. However, all three themes and any theme I think that is important to oceans and human health must have in the forefront the health of both oceans and people. There must be linkages across the sea, sustainable development goals or SDGs and it must include the following areas, equity, sustainability, the context of global climate change, the importance of citizen involvement and engagement and the potential for innovation. And I'll now turn it back to Sheila for our community panel. Perfect, thank you very much, Laura. So um, as, as I said in the beginning, we're going to get four uh, personal statements from four different uh, perspectives and uh, the very first one and I think now we'll try and do the video thing again without having a repeat. Uh, the first one is going to be, uh, hold on, Timmy uh, Bole from Beofane and he is, uh, yeah, so he is, well actually I think in the video he tells you what, all about himself so I'm going to let you play it Paula, just go away. Hello, I am Timothy Boulay. I am the CEO and co-founder of Biofin Biotechnology and co-founder and partner in Emergent Ocean. For me, the link between oceans and human health is, is really fundamental and permeates every aspect of my, my professional life. Um, I think that most of us realize that uh, the oceans are absolutely essential in providing some really key health supporting ecosystem services. We get food from the ocean, we get oxygen from the ocean, uh, we get materials to, to, to build with from the ocean. Uh, there, are, there, are, there are many more. Um, but the, the connection between oceans and human health is, is, is really more fundamental than that. We are in fact two thirds salt water. 
And the reason that we are is because we evolved from the ocean. And so all of our biochemistry uh, has, has evolved and is specific to parameters that were set in the marine environment. And so if we want to improve human health and, and well-being in medicine, it makes sense to look to the ocean because there's a lot of stuff out there that looks a lot like us, um, but has gone through millions and billions of years of other evolutionary pathways, um, which might be beneficial for us if we want to fight disease or improve nutrition or, or, or so on. So that being said, in the, in the past two centuries, oceans has also really been fundamental to the development of, of human health and, and biotechnology. There have been a dozen Nobel Prizes uh, awarded uh, for, for individuals who have been using marine organisms. Um, there are, are dozens of drugs that have been approved or in pipeline um, that have used marine organisms as well uh, for, for cancer, for pain, for, for viruses. The first ever HIV medication, AZT, was uh, only developed after a discovery made using a sea sponge. Um, remdesivir, uh, which is a compound that's being explored to treat coronavirus, is in that same class of compounds that were discovered from marine sponges. Um, there have been many laboratory applications that have been developed uh, using marine discoveries uh, for, for gene expression, for testing for contamination, uh, for conducting uh, PCR and sequencing genomes. Um, there have been numerous surgical applications in terms of bone grafts and skin grafts and tools and tests. Uh, and the list really, really goes on. So I was uh, raised in Northern California in a suburb of San Francisco on the Northern California coast. And I moved to, uh, to France uh, nearly two years ago because there's an incredibly rich tradition of uh, marine exploration and, and oceanography here. Uh, as well as there's this emerging class of, of innovators that are really thinking about how to connect the ocean space to, to, to biotechnology. And so what I thought that I could do coming from California was, was to bridge these two worlds uh, and to bring some of that Silicon Valley innovative startup mentality to some of the really sort of the, the rich history uh, and, and deep knowledge in this marine and the biotechnology space. So in that vein, I have started two companies, uh, the first Biofin, is a company that's taking the latest developments from human cancer medicine and applying them to aquaculture, both to reduce uh, fish diseases, but also to increase environmental sustainability, uh, to, to reduce that negative environmental footprint of aquaculture to ensure that aquaculture is a really viable alternative to, to tap, capture fisheries. And the other company is Emergent Ocean, and we are helping to build the startups in this space. Uh, to, to get them past some of these funding and, and, and knowledge hurdles um, to ensure that they can grow to become uh, powerful, important uh, biotechnology and, and living ocean companies that are good for both human health and medicine, uh, but also for, for oceans and the environment. We are really living in the golden era of, of scientific exploration and understanding, and that's true in terms of environmental sciences and, and geographic sciences and, and biomedical sciences uh, and there's just so much possibility if, if only we can put some of these spheres together um, we'll, we'll really make things easier on ourselves and really accelerate innovation so to do so I think that it can be important to to think about where we came from and in the most literal sense that is the ocean so let's let's keep investigating that and and let's use this technology that we have to make a positive impact for human health and also for ocean health. Happy World Oceans Day. Wonderful. So that was, uh, that was Timmy Burley's uh, intervention, the business perspective. See, and uh, just this is the picture that he sent us that, that encapsulates oceans and human health for him. Really a beautiful picture. And you'll see throughout that everybody has a different perspective. And that is what makes Oceans and Human Health so amazing. Uh, our next speaker is then Anna De Lara from Mare Masma. Um, and I think we'll just go ahead and play that video. My name is Anna De Lara, and I'm marine biologist specialized in marine conservation and biodiversity. I can't remember the first time I used a snorkel or I skipped a boat. I was lucky enough to grow up in a family that shared an enormous love for the ocean. 
I always had a boat, a kayak, and almost every toy you can imagine to enjoy the sea. The sea became my passion. And as I grow up through my studies, I turn my passion into a profession. I work as a guide in Maremasma, an ecotourism company located in a small and rural fishing village called Oz in Galicia, northwest of Spain. It is located right where the Masma River meets the wild coastline of the Cantarian Sea, creating a unique environment. The mission of our company is to bring the people close to the sea and the sea closer to the people. We offer our customers different ways of interacting with the ocean in a fun way, diving, kayaking, snorkeling, sailing, or surfing. We are a multi-activity company. We seek to make that interaction fun, but we also take as an opportunity to share our knowledge of the marine environment and raise awareness and the sense of co-responsibility towards the ocean. My job is diverse and depends on the season of the year. From June to September, we offer boat trips, kayaking and stand-up paddle tours, and snorkeling or diving activities. I really love the boat trips where we explain the geology of the coast, as well as the history of the nearby villages. One of the most popular trips we have is a boat visit to the beach of the cathedrals, which is the Galicia's most visited natural monument. We visit the beach during the high tide when there is almost no sun exposed, which allows us to get very close to observe the amazing rocks while the beach is completely empty. On the way, we often see dolphins and different species of marine birds. It is a magical moment. Diving and snorkeling is also really fun. I love showing the people and their water inhabitants on their free environment. I also guide kayaking trips where we calmly paddle along the coastline or inside the Masma Estuary, which is part of the Natura 2000 network. Like in many of our activities, we talk with our customers about the marine ecosystem, its biodiversity, and the ecological and oceanographical processes that take place at the sea. It is a powerful way to connect with nature. It is amazing how little people know about the sea. From September to June, I lead and develop environmental education campaign for kids and adults. I run marine biology workshops and courses. What really captivates me is working with the schools and teaching the kids about the importance of the ocean. In our workshops, we showcase traditional activities linked to the sea. We also take kids out to engage in beer watching and beach cleanups or take them to visit the lighthouse or a local fish market, for example. Every now and then, we bring the kids, the kids to see Paco, who is the eighth generation of a wooden boat builder's family, the only place in the whole region that keeps that craft alive. Paco is a living encyclopedia of the sea. That's the reason why I love to be in touch with him as with other people that work in the sea related jobs in our community. I'm very fortunate to have the opportunity of learning from our elders. I think it's very important not to forget our roots and to convey our local grassroots knowledge to their kids, our future. In fact, our community depends largely on the ocean from fishers, to people that harvest the seafood, fishmongers, tourist operators, seabuilders, etc. Our livelihood depends on the healthy ocean. Through my job, I meet people from all areas, backgrounds, and ages. The vast majority of them has a simplified vision of the sea. The ocean provides us with an enormous amount of services and resources. We should all be aware of how much we depend on the ocean. Our future and faith are intertwined. I cannot imagine a life away from the ocean. The ocean is my life. It means the world to me, my work, my livelihood, my mental health, my inspiration, my freedom. When you take action to protect the ocean, you are not just protecting the ocean. You are taking a stand for me. Thank you. Wonderful. So 
that was the the intervention, the community invention, intervention from Anna. Thank you very much. And again, uh, this is the picture that she chose. I could very well imagine that must be a, a, a really um, amazing place to be right now when it's gray and miserable out in Belgium. Um, so next we are gonna have uh, Frank Sullivan. He's a, the medical director at the Department of Radiology, or Radiation Oncology uh, at the Galway Clinic. And uh, we'll have his video now. I'm an Irishman and the Irish are an island people and I was fortunate to have been born in Malahide, County Dublin, which is on the sea. And I've been fortunate to live um, on the sea pretty much all my life. Uh, currently, um, I live with my wife, Karen, in Galway, Ireland, and fortunately, we're on the ocean. So I have a, a deep connection with the ocean. I've always wanted to live close to it because I think it has many benefits in health and well-being, some of which I enjoy myself. I'm an oncologist, a cancer physician, and increasingly we recognize the connection between lifestyle factors, environmental factors, and the development of a chronic medical conditions such as cancer. And I've seen in my practice in the last number of years that we are increasingly focused on uh, issues such as nutrition, um, exercise, sleep, and stress reduction um, in the prevention of the development of cancers, but in also the management of those cancers and improvement of patients' quality of life. And in almost all of those categories, the ocean plays a profound part. For example, healthy nutrition, um, some of the healthiest diets include uh, seafood, such as the Mediterranean diet, they're evidence-based to be of benefit. Um, you know, exercise of all kinds are well known to improve overall health and reduce risks of cancer and other chronic medical conditions, and the ocean is a perfect place to do that. And both both uh, physical and mental health um, uh, can be improved by, uh, with access to uh, bodies of water such as the ocean. So in almost all of my medical practice, um, I can see where the ocean is a benefit to my patients. In fact, very close to where we live now, every morning in, in Black Rock in Galway, almost a thousand people show up uh, winter and summer and brave even the coldest of waters to immerse their, themselves uh, for a swim every day. And many believe that without that, their health would be, would be much worse. We don't fully understand the, the way that the ocean impacts on, on, on that health, but we do know that it, it is uh, of tremendous benefit for many patients um, with these conditions. Obviously, environmental change, in uh, particular in rising levels of CO2, um, um, has profound effects on, on, uh, on the ocean and the health of the oceans and the hydrosphere. Um, rising CO2 levels in the form of carbonic acid end up causing ocean acidification that has tremendous and profound effects on diversification, on uh, all kinds of um, uh, pathologic mechanisms which could affect uh, people's health. And so uh, in, in our research and in, in our work in the laboratory, we need to better live with the ocean and utilize it for, say, chemotherapy drugs, exploit um, natural compounds that will come from the ocean to get us better cancer treatments. Uh, we need to uh, measure the value of our current health interventions and understand the effects on quality of life, uh, particularly as um, uh, interacting with the ocean is involved. Um, and for my own personal and professional work, both research and clinically, I can see an increasing interdependence between uh, cancer care, um, quality of life, uh, value and sustainability in health delivery, uh, climate change and the oceans. Hugely important. Wonderful. Uh, so that was Frank's perspective from the from the health perspective, and again, uh, this is what oceans and human health means to him. Uh, it is a, a beautiful picture, and it's not really how I uh, remember Ireland to look, to be honest. But there you go. Um, finally, we'll have the youth perspective. So Iski Britton, uh, who's a surfer and a marine social scientist at the Whitaker Institute of NUI Galway, uh, will give us her perspective, and we'll have her video now. 
Happy World Oceans Day from Ireland, and I'm excited to share with you what ocean and human health means to me. I'd like to begin with a quote from Paul Kingsnorth. What we see is not the world. It's the stories we've been given that shape what we see. And we are limited by our senses. The ecological crisis is a crisis of stories, which are really about inadequate relationships. As a marine social scientist, my work is about better understanding our relationship with the sea and how we might heal and restore it. And as a surfer, my life is lived in intimate relationship with the sea. What is of deep concern for me is the deterioration of our relationship with the natural world, especially the loss of our emotional connection with the ocean in all its wonder and aliveness. Globally, water bodies and our ocean are the most degraded ecosystems in the world. They hold all of who we are, our waste, our memories, our history, our ancestry, our bones, our breath. And the sea is sick. We can't be well in a sick sea. So how do we understand our connection to water, to the ocean? Whose stories are we listening to? My name, Iski, has its origins in ancient Gaelic for fish. I'm named after an important salmon river in Ireland that creates a beautiful wave where the river flows into the sea. It's my father's favourite surf spot. And in Irish mythology, the salmon is known as Bradon Fasa, the salmon of knowledge or wisdom. So there was a time when we understood the wisdom of, our spe of other species, a time when we listened to the more than human world. And somehow we have forgotten. My name reminds me that my identity is tied to the identity of the salmon. All our identities are inextricably linked to the sea. We have been shaped and formed by the ocean. Ocean and human health offers a lens to see, understand and experience our connection in a more holistic way. To understand our connection in a holistic way requires new collaborations and partnerships that break out of existing silos and foster mutual cooperation and support in the face of global challenges. It also requires a deeper form of listening and an awareness and acknowledgement of whose stories we are listening to and whose stories are not heard, recognizing the need for diversity and inclusion. And in the last 10 years, we are just beginning to realize how engagement with healthy marine and coastal environments or blue space can directly support, enhance and restore human health and well-being, in particular for vulnerable groups. This offers huge potential for novel healthcare interventions and health promotion when addressing, for example, the psychological distress that will continue long after the coronavirus pandemic is over. To tap into and realize the tremendous potential in a fair, just and inclusive way, we need to restore the ocean as a safe and healthy space for all. Our ability to access and experience the sea in a positive way is shaped and determined by our history, our culture, class, race, gender, ethnicity. To restore the ocean as a health enabling space, we need to create spaces beyond borders where the illusion of separation can crumble like the Welcome Wave surf program for young asylum seekers in Ireland, which you see here, or the Ocean Therapy Charity for children with autism and other disabilities, and Be Like Water in Iran for women and girls instilling leadership skills through engagement with the water and the sea in a positive way. And sea Sisters in Sri Lanka empowering women and girls with essential water-based life skills and the Sea Suit Project, creating functional modest sportswear for a diversity of women and girls to access blue spaces. These are just some of a multitude of amazing initiatives and innovations around the world, connecting people with our ocean. To become ocean literate means to understand how and why we are connected to the ocean. And this requires diverse ways of knowing and the integration of different stories and experiences for how and why the ocean matters. Celebrating a more diverse, healthy and inclusive ocean. Restoring our relationship, freeing our senses and opening our eyes to new possibilities so we can reimagine a sustainable future for all. Thank you. That's wonderful. Uh, thank you very much, Iski. So I will now 
Let's see, I'm going to share my screen again. We're going tag, playing tag here with our screens. Uh, just to show you uh, again, this is the picture that Iski chose and I can very well see why she did. Uh, I will remind you that you can ask questions to any of these, the people who have spoken in the question and answer section. So please do so. And now I want to uh, give the floor to Laura Fleming, who's going to, um, is that right? Conclusions and recommendations. Is that what she says? That's right. She's going to give us some conclusions and recommendations. There we go. So uh, thank you again to our amazing community panel, all these different voices for who they are and what they do for oceans and human health. Our conclusions and recommendations from the SOFIE project are that interdisciplinary and international funding is needed in this area. We need to work across communities, particularly the medical, public health, marine environmental science communities. We need to offer transdisciplinary training for our future generations so that for them it is normal to work in this fashion. And ultimately all of this research training and other activities must be aligned with co-creation and engagement with communities, businesses, NGOs, and, uh, and governments. Next slide. So as we've been saying throughout this uh, webinar, um, we hope that you've enjoyed some of our images of what oceans and human health meets, meets, means to us because the oceans are something that affects individuals and communities. And we hope that you'll share your images when you tweet about us and use other forms of social media. The picture that you see there is my Oceans in Human Health. It's my daughter as a young child in the beautiful state of Maine in the United States. And for me, she represents the future. Next slide. If you want to learn more about the Seas, Oceans, and Public Health in Europe project, the SOFI project, we have a toolkit for the strategic research agenda. We also have a LinkedIn group and a website where there's increasingly evidence in this area being added to it on a daily basis. Next slide. I also want to thank the other sponsors of this webinar, um, CIRICA in particular, but also the European Marine Board and the other H2020, Horizon 2020 Blue Health Project, which has collected evidence around um, the risks and benefits of interacting with all blue environments. And I think I now turn this back over to Sheila. That's correct, yes. So now we have some time for questions. Um, I'm not seeing any questions coming in. Uh, I will remind you that, uh, Paula, if you can go one slide back quickly. I will remind you that uh, that on the, um, oh, there we go. On the LinkedIn page of the Marine Board, we have a, a specific area that is uh, to, to Oceans and Human Health, to, so, to the SOFA project. And we have, uh, we had a, a previous webinar for the project and we've got some questions and answers sections there. And if you have any questions that you think of after this webinar, um, or for those of you that are on, uh, on YouTube and can't ask any questions right now, you can ask them there and we will try and uh, respond. So this LinkedIn group will be there uh, after the end of this project, which is actually gone now, the end of the project. Okay, so if you can go to the next uh, slide, there we go. So, so now we're gonna have some time for questions. Um, and some questions that we have is what should be the next steps and how can finding integrate, uh, how can the findings be integrated into the existing policies? But I see that we have a few questions. I'm going to start with um, the question by Wendy Watson Wright. Hi, Wendy, nice to see you here. Um, she says the COVID situation seems to offer an opportunity to bring issues of the ocean and human health to the attention of the public and politicians. Is Sophie trying to do anything about this? Laura, I think I'm going to let you ask that, answer that question. Yeah, um, I'm sorry. Could you repeat it? I apologize. <laughs> sorry. The question is that the COVID situation seems to offer yes. opportunities to bring the issues of oceans and human health together. And what is Sophie trying to do other than this webinar, which I think we've, we've tried anyway. <laughs> Um, I think what's happening now, um, Sophie has basically laid out, as I said before, an agenda of where to go next and also produced a lot of very useful evidence. So for example, we reviewed 18,000 uh, peer reviewed papers looking at whether or not there is evidence out there between the connections between ocean and health outcomes and actually found that there's a lot of gaps. For example, there's a real gap in terms of saying that plastics 
actually impact human health. So to me, that's an opportunity for very interdisciplinary research going forward. I also want to point out that, um, uh, that uh, colleagues of ours at AZTI working at the, with the University of Exeter and uh, colleagues in Norway have set out a survey to look at how people have been reacting to the lack of access to blue and green spaces across Europe and actually around the world. Um, and we're hoping that that initial information will, will be able to help push the whole idea that high quality blue and green spaces are essential for our health and well being going forward. And high quality means sustainable use. Perfect. Thank you very much. And um, then we have actually that follows on. Uncle Borja has basically said regarding the next steps you are asking for uh, in, the, uh, in the paper that. Uh, that uncle had actually given in the questions and answers session. Um, he basically talks about the summer school, the Ashti summer school. Do you want to uh, say something about that, Laura? Um, I would just point out that increasingly we are cre creating um, materials for uh, transdisciplinary training and not just of um, scientists, but also the larger community interested in oceans and human health. You heard from Anna how she works with her community locally, but there are increasingly curriculum materials out there. And one example of that was a wonderful um, event that we did thanks to Ahel Borja at AZTI in June of last year, um, a three-day event on oceans and human health, and you can access that, um, that teaching through AZTI. Thanks, Laura. Um, we also have the other panelists there that spoke, but uh, I'm gonna ask the question that Britt Alexander asked, how can we best encourage transdisciplinary work between medical and marine science communities? And what are the co-benefits for each community? And I'm gonna ask Frank, please, if you can, Sorry to put you on the spot, but you are our, our uh, champion here, if you can answer that. Yeah, well, I, I think it's, um, I would say, against our tribe, if you will, in, in healthcare and medicine. We've been lagging behind, I think, on this work, and, and we do need to become more involved. I think uh, we're all increasingly involved in the management of chronic conditions, and we increasingly recognize that there are more similarity than differences, say, between cancer, cardiovascular disease, diabetes, Alzheimer's, and so forth. And there's so many ways that uh, interacting with the oceans and the programs that are being discussed here can benefit our patients. I really do think that we need to move uh, our community in the health space more in line with this work. Um, so I think that's, that's something that's a challenge to us and hopefully uh, we can take up the, uh, that challenge going forward. And, and I'm going to ask the rest of the panel. I don't know if Iski, um, you're also a social scientist, maybe you have some ideas, um, or if anybody else wants to uh, come in on that, uh, it'd be great to have another uh, another voice. Or uh, Laura, maybe I know you you can probably talk about it. But if somebody else wants to say something about it, you know, how do we actually do transdisciplinary science properly? I will, I, I will say from our side, when we ran the workshop, uh, where we had the medical side and the marine side together, uh, I remember that we spent about a day just getting the, the terminology right. We spoke for a whole day before we could actually understand each other properly. And the next day we had to start all over again because we had to go away and think about it. So I think it's not insignificant that we, that, that, uh, that we can do that. So I think, um, yeah, uh, I don't know if anybody wants to answer. Anything else? Iski, are you? Yeah, maybe I'll just jump in really quick. Thanks. Great question. Um, and of course, the work we're doing, the challenges we're facing are increasingly calling for more transdisciplinary work. Yeah. How do we do that? How do we integrate so many different forms of knowledge, like you were just saying, Sheila? Uh, one example from the SOFI project I really liked um, is with Irish Doctors for Environment. And as a way to Hannah, how do you bring people together into this space, coming from different disciplines with such different perspectives? And the first kind of starting point for connect 
connecting and creating a conversation was actually to go into that space, to go to the coast and have an experience of the sea, to tap, kind of go back to step zero of what it's all about and why does it all matter. So through that shared experience, a common dialogue can emerge that then spills over into getting into the nitty gritty around the science and the research and the policy. So I think it's important to also look at like how, how we collaborate as researchers in different ways and approaches of doing that. Okay. Uh, does anybody else want to answer that question? I think we have one more. I'm so. in, sorry, oh, sorry. yeah, Timmy, go for it. Yeah, and I'll just say that, you know, I think it's really about understanding uh, sort of commonalities, right? Uh, in the context of this recent COVID outbreak, uh, the commonality has been that we've all been impacted by COVID. Um, and so in that sense, you've got uh, marine researchers and medical scientists who are aligned with the, with the same agenda. And if you can begin to understand that overlap, I think that you can make a lot of progress. Uh, one of the things that we've been doing with, uh, with one of my companies, Emergent Ocean, has been keeping track of all of these oceans and COVID connections. And there's a tremendous amount that's come out of marine research that can be used to fight the pandemic, uh, both for, for therapies, or potentially for vaccines, um, general scientific understandings and tools and applications. Um, and so we're, we're at this point where, you know, we can bring together these different understandings to make a collective impact. Excellent. Uh, Anna, I don't know if you wanted to say something uh, or if not, I think there's one more question actually. And I think uh, it'd be nice if we can take that one before we go to the final closing by, by um, Ms. Key. Uh, it's from Alison Carney, and she she says she works on gender equality and support for social change uh, in collaboration with the Open Minds Active. Um, so well-being is 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 included, and and her question is for Laura and Iski because Laura mentions the necessity of equity and uh, equity equality, sorry, and Iski um, talked about inclusion. So the question is, does Sophie have specific recommendations? Uh, for this in terms of inclusion and equity uh, for the use of the ocean. Uh, who often, uh, for those who, who don't uh, um, get to access. Uh, so um, this is Laura. Um, both, both our research in uh, the SOFIE project, but also in the Blue Health project, have showed repeatedly that people, the people who benefit the most from interacting with natural environments, not only blue, but green environments, but particularly blue environments are actually people of lower socioeconomic class, people who are at risk for many of the chronic diseases and other negative issues for their health and well-being that, that Frank talked about. So there's two aspects. One of them is around equality of access, but also maintaining uh, the, the quality of the ocean environment, of any natural environment, and using it sustainably. So, so I think there is a tension there between all of us wanting to access these beautiful spaces and making sure that they remain <laughs> relatively intact and that we interact with them sustainably. But if I had to point to a group that could most benefit, it would be poor people, particularly people who live far from beautiful green and blue spaces. And I know that uh, ISKI has um, a, a whole program that is around gender specifically. Uh, thanks, Alison, for the question. Really appreciate it. And um, of course, it, it couldn't be more relevant with what we're facing right now. And it's it's yeah, it's such a huge thing to consider, especially in the context of health. Um, and really important that moving forward, the work that we do is how we consider the social and economic determinants of health in terms of how people experience um, their own health and also within the community and also their experience of place and environment. Um, and that what we think of as possible barriers might not be immediately visible or apparent. Um, yeah, so there's layers and layers and layers though, of, of what we need to work through here, you know, culturally and socially. And I think part of it, and it's a big part in, in the SOFI strategic research agenda around um, equity, equality and inclusion is specifically looking at education, in particular early career researchers. So it's going to like, 
look at look at those spaces and look at how um, how is uh, diversity and inclusion being addressed to bring in those diversity of perspectives and different ways of knowing from like the early onset, like through school in particular for, for early career researchers and what are the opportunities available and are they uh, equally shared and how do we create more of them? Um, so that's just just one, one way of looking at it, uh, as well as all the amazing initiatives and innovations happening around the world. Um, Sophie's uh, already mapped uh, within the Sophie project mapped quite a lot of those initiatives that are creating much more awareness around inclusion and diversity and different ways of experiencing the sea. Um, so yeah, uh, I think there's a lot more to come in that area. So great work, Alison, thanks. So I know that we're running out of time and Ziggy, I, know, I hope you don't have, you, you, you don't mind, but I do want to ask Anna this question as well, because I think um, she's done a great video and I wonder what is the, maybe, how do you think this diversity play into the tourism industry? Do you think that, um, I guess you guys get the people who come to you, but is it, is it something that, um, yeah, that, that, that you've seen change over time? Is it, do you mostly have, people from, from your area coming in, or do you have people from other places, people of, of color, for instance, which is something that is, is uh, more, uh, you know, uh, topical these days? <laughs> yes. Um, basically, in, Mar in Maremasma, we have like two main activities, as I said, one related with education. So we do a lot of activities with kids, which I think is very important because they are coming from different backgrounds, People, uh, kids that are coming from rural areas, for more uh, for the cities, or even from the coast or from the inner part. So you can really show um, how the sea is giving them benefits, even if they are very different, completely different, because the sea treats them as all were the same. So the benefits they take, they are really really amazing that they can only happen in the sea and also when we work with tourists there are also people coming from different countries or uh, different areas from from spain so where we realize is that people that usually are not connected to the sea once they get connection and also because we try to teach them and show them and learn what they are seeing so it's not only to enjoy but also to learn a little bit it's very useful to later try to teach them or try to show them the big problems that they are happening in the ocean and how important it is pro to protect the ocean for their own health and for the health of the ocean. So it's, it's a very useful tool uh, apart from a lot of things, but the, the sea I think is very, very useful tool to show the, the, the importance and also to do it um, in a fun way so you can teach more and show them more the, the importance of, of that, yeah. yeah. Wonderful, thank you very much. We have run out of time and we are going to be out of time, which is, is, is unfortunate, but I, th I really wanna thank the speakers and thank Laura for, for all the leadership that she's shown. And now I think we'll just go to uh, Ziggy Bruber. Can you have the next slide? She's the, uh, from the uh, LVCs and Ocean Units so for uh, EG Research and Innovation for, for the European Commission. Um, see if we can have your video now, that'd be perfect. And then you can give us the closing remarks. That'd be great. And the European perspective, very important. Thank you, Sheila. Hello to everyone. And uh, congratulations to the whole team, to Laura, Sheila, Iski, Frank, Anna, Timmy, and many others who have really contributed to this great project. Now, for us, it is one of these new projects that uh, we attach uh, a high uh, importance to. It is something that when the project in 2017 was launched, nobody thought how timely it would be today to talk about the link of human health and the ocean, both for a happy World Ocean Day, but also now that we have to look, how can we really now contribute to exit of the COVID-19 crisis. And I think there we have an enormous potential. I heard, uh, I listened very carefully, and I, if I can just summarize, it is all about people, solutions, opportunities, and equality. 
And that is also what uh, we in the European Union now are working on. You have all seen and heard about the recovery package. Oceans, environment are really now as well, ocean not so much, but we hope there will be more at the heart of the Green Deal. We have exciting times in front of us when it comes to research and innovation. We are launching the Horizon Europe program, hopefully, if it will be adopted by the end of this year. We are working to roll out the mission on healthy ocean seas, coastal and inland water. So what great space of opportunities, the health space, has to come into all this. And for that, we need to, all of you to work together. I'm sure I have seen that there are still, I think, 88 participants now listening. Every one of you must know someone working in the health space. So every one of us has to go and talk to these people because we do have this need to bridge, as Frank uh, correctly said. So we have to think, how can we actually penetrate the health space to really provide all the solutions that the ocean offer us. So we need to work together. We need all to play an active role. And only if we do that, we can protect our oceans and our health in future. Interdisciplinarity, transdisciplinarity, this is also something that we will really build into our new Horizon Europe uh, the cluster as well. As you know, we have a cluster in front of us as well to fill for future calls. So watch out, there will be a lot of opportunities. Keep out, keep up with your good work, please. And I know that the project is finished, but we have to see, and we are, I mean, we have already had an interesting discussion with Laura and Sheila, how can we make sure that now the results are properly disseminated beyond the what we call very often the usual suspects, which are, is the very friendly marine community. We have to get the really all these important messages out. And I don't know, Sheila, do you want to put on my favorite, one of my favorite pictures? I took this picture, it is uh, where I have a house in Liguria in Italy. And it shows you all the different shades of blue and as a social scientist, I also uh, looked into the meaning now. What does blue actually mean? So blue represents both the sky and the sea, as you can see in this picture. And it's associated with open spaces, with freedom, with intuition, with imagination, expansiveness, inspiration, sensitivity. Blue also represents meanings of depth, trust, loyalty, sincerity, wisdom, confidence, stability, faith, heaven and intelligence. And it has positive effects on the mind and the body. It invokes rest and can cause the body to produce chemicals that are calming and exude feelings of tranquility. And I think that is what we all have now to look at, particularly in a time which is very, very difficult for all of us. And we continue to work with you. And I hope, we all hope that you work with us. So thank you very much. Thank you very, very much, Ziggy. Thank you for closing this. And I want to thank all of you for, for um, being there and for continuing to, to, to listen to our, our webinar. Um, as we said, we have um, uh, recorded it and it will be on YouTube. So if anybody uh, wants to see any bits that you haven't um, seen yet, uh, then you are more than welcome. But with that, I think we will, uh, I just want to say, if you have any more questions, you can contact us um, at these email addresses, info at marineboard.eu and Laura's in email address. And uh, please do go and look at the website because the website has a lot of good information on oceans and human health and good sort of tools that you can use if you want to, if you need to use them um, in your daily lives. So wonderful. Thank you very much for the speakers. Thank you very much for Paula who helped with uh, making sure that everything runs smoothly. And uh, yes, uh, happy, World Ocean Day, and hopefully we'll see you again. So thank you very much. Bye. Thank you, Sheila. And also thank you to Sirika and yes. uh, as well to the member of the members of the Tonino, member of the yep. European Parliament for actually hosting this event. Indeed, yes. I should have said that. Thank you very much.
And thank you, Ziggy, for, for um, being there and for supporting us as well. So, goodbye. You're welcome. Bye-bye. <laughs>